Good morning. Good to be with you once more. And let me now navigate with you through the latest developments in the EU around legislation and policies for safe, smart and sustainable mobility. And this context is, of course, very relevant to all professionals working to introduce advanced automotive and mobility solutions worldwide. Um, I mentioned already that at CLEPA we are doing our utmost to make the world of policy and the world of industry talk to each other and understand one another. Automotive suppliers are mobility solution providers and in the front line of the mobility transformation that we are living today. So what about the perspective of policymakers? What is essential for transport and automotive in a fast changing world? And what should they know about mobility technology companies and their daily business. First, it's important to note that the economic and health challenges of recent months have re-emphasized the role that transport plays for society at large. People really cherish their personal mobility. It makes them feel independent and safe. We need to work together to ensure that mobility and transport will remain accessible and affordable for all. Uh, this is a very important objective. But at the same time, the pressure remains high on the transport industry to change, to limit the negative impacts, take road safety or exhaust emissions, and to make that change happen rather fast. The pressure is, of course, particularly high for cities and for urbanized areas. The political pressure is also what shines through in the approach that policymakers have been taking in policy to decarbonize transport and for the automotive industry in particular. The European Commission, the body that proposes new laws in the EU, wants to lift the overall EU carbon reduction target for 2030 to 55% instead of the current 40%, and this is compared to 1990 levels. The co-decision parties are currently taking position on this proposal. Uh, the European Parliament is aiming for 60% and the Council of Member States is expected to take a decision later this year. And it's a tough challenge, no doubt. Important, however, as they may be, the, the numbers should not be the main point. The EU Green Deal strategy is first of all designed to decarbonize the EU economy towards 2050. And secondly, it aims to make the EU economy sustainable, to turn climate and environmental challenges into opportunities, and to ensure that a transition is both just and inclusive for everyone. And this brings me to our main message as supplier industry to policymakers in Europe today. The question is not if to decarbonize transport by 2050, it's really about how to do this. The challenge that we face as automotive industry and society is to manage the transition to safe, smart and sustainable mobility in an ambitious, in a realistic and in an inclusive way. It's important that we, that we achieve the objectives while securing innovation and manufacturing and employment in Europe, as well as reaching these important climate goals. Automotive suppliers fully support the Paris goals and they have a long-term commitment toward achieving climate neutrality by 2050. Uh, but the industry is also the one providing the technology solutions that will help realize these ultimate goals. In our view, the current legislative approach, setting tailpipe only targets that drive all efforts towards just one type of solution, electrification, is really not the smartest way to go. The world will need the full spectrum of technologies and energy carriers to achieve the objective. And this includes electrification, battery electric vehicles, various degrees of hybridization from mild to plug-in, uh, hybrid vehicles, but also fuel cells, and we need also low and carbon zero, um, sorry, we need low and zero carbon fuel. We need hydrogen and we need renewable energies. Um, that way, not only vehicles uh, that are new, but also carbon emissions from uh, the existing vehicle fleet on the road can be covered. And that is why we make the case for an ambitious, as well as reliable and technology neutral regulatory framework to achieve the objectives. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the green transition is of course only part of the broader transformation that we're going through. We also aim for zero fatalities on the roads 
and we strive for highly connected and automated transport. And here equally, we are beyond target setting. The question is rather how to get there. It's important to make a clear distinction between connectivity and automation. First of all, connectivity is an enabler for automated mobility, but much more than that as well. Connectivity and the use of in-vehicle data are the main drivers for the creation of new and innovative mobility services and business models. Connectivity is in fact already all around us and it will continue to make a real difference in our daily use of mobility. And this is about how are we moving from A to B? How are we transporting goods? Uh, do we own a vehicle or do we pay per minute? Uh, will we soon have everything delivered at our doorsteps? Automation, on the other hand, will take a bit longer and it will more gradually evolve. The technology exists today, but society isn't quite ready. Here we need a safe environment and we need to adapt our mindsets. We need to enable confidence in the technology. And at this point, I often refer to all of our smartphones. Uh, if you had been told 10 years ago what your smartphone can do today, you may have found that idea really spooky. Automotive suppliers are strongly present in the fast developing field of smart mobility and they lead globally in patent applications. Heavy investments go into software developments. There are four times as many software, software lines in a car than there are in an airplane. Uh, and you will find sensor technology in the most unexpected places uh, today. The share of electronics used in a car or in other vehicles is continuously growing. The car today already is the biggest thing in the Internet of Things. Connected mobility and automated driving can greatly benefit society by increasing safety on the roads, by reducing congestion and pollution, by facilitating uh, electrification and wider resource efficiency, and by enabling data fueled mobility and intelligent transport services. Um, and they all support a modern and inclusive society. Um, it's important therefore that public acceptance of future driverless cars and trucks uh, is fostered and is promoted. And it's important that the framework conditions for connected and automated driving are going to be defined. Take access to data, take e-privacy, uh, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, ethical aspects or liability. The framework uh, conditions must be set and ideally, they should also be well aligned globally. Now, on some of these items, we do see quite good progress. Uh, UN regulations on vehicle cybersecurity and software updates were adopted in June of, of this year, and they will be mandatory in the European Union from July 2022. Furthermore, in Europe, the new general safety regulation will make several driver assistance technologies mandatory, again from July 2022. Uh, they include advanced emergency braking, intelligent speed assistance, emergency lane keeping and driver drowsiness and attention warning. And they will also introduce camera and radar technologies into all vehicles. So these are really key devices to enable next generation features of vehicle automation. Standardizing such technologies will be a milestone towards self-driving vehicles uh, for all of us. Uh, and all of us, uh, all around us. One area where uh, CLIPA has been putting increased attention is uh, policy in the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, as you may remember, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen wanted to introduce legislation on uh, artificial intelligence within her first 100 days in office. Um, and given the fact that no country in the world has ever regulated artificial intelligence before, uh, this regulation would indeed position the European Union as a world reference. Well, then COVID-19 arrived and the pace slowed somewhat, but the Commission is still determined to regulate. And we expect the regulation to follow a risk-based approach. So-called high-risk applications will be subject to mandatory requirements before they can be deployed and commercialized. And as you can guess, automated driving and transport are already identified as high risk. Now, in response with our members, we are advocating 
uh, requirements that remain proportionate enough to leave room for innovation. And we will also try and ensure that for the automotive sector, any new artificial intelligence related requirement will be integrated into the existing type approval framework for uh, vehicles rather than uh, getting a new set of requirements with uh, separate testing, with separate certification, uh, etc. So that's all very important. And finally, we all uh, we also underline that it is necessary to increase the opportunities for testing and to continue funding of new ideas and projects. But I think um, it's important to say um, that, yeah, what is it all about? Uh, the role of artificial intelligence in the sector is not to make cars more complex. It's uh, to make them safer and more sustainable. And this, again, can be a great tool and a great uh, technology. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, to sum up, uh, Europe, I think we know it all, is home to advanced technology competence, a skilled workforce and a strategic high value in the industrial base. And the automotive supply industry is a key asset for global economies and societies. The automotive industry is also living its biggest transformation in history, and this entails many opportunities, but also many challenges. And COVID-19 is actually accelerating the change, but also adding further economic stress. As CLEPA, we underline the need for an honest debate about the effects of policy decisions via an open dialogue. And the key questions remain not if, uh, but how to achieve the many societal objectives, securing innovation, manufacturing and employment in Europe, as well as reaching the climate and the digital goals. And of course, international supply chain and international cooperation remains essential as well. Now, are we optimistic about these important topics in times of Brexit, we still have no deal, um, in times of heavy pressure on globalization and a strong and assertive China? In my view, yes, we have to be. We have to be optimistic. Rules-based trade, high standards and a focus of, uh, on innovation are no hollow phrases. They, they cannot be. 2020 has already been one uh, incredibly challenging year for the world today. Uh, this is a crucial moment to discuss forward-looking strategies related to mobility and industry. And I warmly invite all of you to take part in that debate, in that discussion. And I thank you for your attention right now. Thank you. Have a good conference to continue.